Okay, live on Facebook. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out. Looks like we're live on YouTube as well. So there we are. YouTube, welcome. Facebook, welcome. Let me get Instagram fired up, uh, and then we'll chat. Fun, fun, fun stuff. Let's go cancel. Do that. Do that. Do that. There, let's see how we do it. Uh, Susan's checking in from California first. Anne's here. At least four from 199. Woohoo! I like it. All right, let's get Instagram fired up. Uh, Instagram. Okay, live on Instagram. So there we are. So we are now live on Facebook, live on YouTube, live on Instagram. Welcome to episode 173. Uh, give me two seconds. Uh, cause I got to tell you about five, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes ago. And I came in here to get everything settled. The computer behind me wouldn't boot up. The iPad decided it wanted to reboot. It was, um, a complete disaster about 10 minutes ago. So let me just double check this, uh, over here. Looks like. Hey, Janine, would you bring me a water, sweetie? Yeah. i tell you, uh, the technology part of this is is not my the best part for me. It, it, just, it, it just makes it frustrating because, you know, when you do everything right, and, you know, I think we all know this, right? You do everything right, and there's uh, completely out of your control. So, awesome. Thank you. So, uh, Waiting for this to load up. I tell you, I mean, it was a technology nightmare. But anyway, let's go. Let's get back to you because that's why we're here. Uh, let me get all the way back to the beginning here. So Roxanne's here. I got you. Kath's here. Anne from Denver. Good evening, Rachel. Hello. Uh, Harper said the Bronx is in the house. Woo woo. Kaylin's here. Hello. Karen from Long Island. Good evening. California is always well represented. That's the fun thing about a 10 p.m. Eastern is that it's, you know, 7 o'clock over on the West Coast. And you guys are, you're right in the thick of things. Most everyone on the East Coast decides to go to bed by 10 p.m. So that makes it fun. Uh, Lori's here. Dayton, Ohio is checking in. Sarah, good evening. Mick from West Virginia, good evening. Uh, Matthew from Iowa, good evening to you. Georgia, Jennifer's checking in. Central Florida, Paula is always here. KCG over in California, Source Films, Chris, checking in from California. We're going to rename this the California Show, right? Uh, Paula's checking in from Central Florida. Lake Ellsnore, California, Becky's here. Dayton, Ohio, very nice. Chrissy, hello. New Jersey, Andrea's checking in. Debbie from Rockford, Illinois. Yay. Uh, Donna, down neighbors to the south over in Kentucky. Good evening. Terry from Kansas City. Good to see you as well. Very fun. Uh, Joyce, checking in from Oregon. Good evening to you. Hope all is well out in Oregon. Uh, Roni from Manateca. How do you pronounce that? California? M A A A A A N T E C A T E C A. We're calling it California. Kim's checking in from California as well. This is the California show. I don't know if we've gone international yet. I think we have. I think Roxanne said she checked in from uh, international. Let's see. Tanny's here from Michigan. Uh, let's see. Suzanne's here. Denise is here from Seattle. Missouri representing Heather. Good evening to you. Um, yeah, it is a great time for California. There's Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne's checking in from Ontario, so we've officially gone international. If I didn't, if we didn't already, um, it's an international show. That's so fun. Deborah checking in from Chicago. Uh, let's see, Donna's here. Good evening to you. Then Iowa. Uh, it says in Iowa, hoping my meeting doesn't get canceled tomorrow due to a snowstorm. Well, that's okay. If it does, Lisa, we, we're going to get you pumped up tonight. So you still need to go tomorrow, but if for some reason that the weather doesn't cooperate, you'll be okay. You will absolutely be okay. Terry, checking in from California. Uh, Lisa, checking in from Indiana, not too far away at all. I don't know where Flora, Indiana is, though. 
Um, so, Liz, I am coming to California. Uh, the date is, I'm only going to tell you, I'm not going to post it, uh, November 10th, I'll be out in San Francisco. So for those of you who live near the San Francisco area, November 10th, throw that on your calendar for sure. For now, more details will certainly become available. But as of right now, I'm making a California stop in November. So that is uh, – so, so, Kim, uh, that's as southern California as I'm able to go is San Francisco. I know it's not really southern California, but uh, but it's close. Uh, Craig, KS Craig over on YouTube checking in saying, good to see you, six months at Lifetime, congratulations. That's not easy at all. Um, yeah, Kim, I know, LA, I know, 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 I know all of the, you know, you guys know how big California is? It's like this big on a map. And so I'm going here. So help me, meet me halfway or something, right? Uh, Pam's checking in from not California. <laughs> Rockford, Illinois, Coletta is here. Uh, let's see, uh, Puyallup, T, Ta, T A, is it Ta? I forget how we pronounce that. I hope I get it right. Ta, I'm gonna go with Ta. Um, very, very fun. Toledo's checking in. Abby's here. New York is in the house. Donna, I got you. Uh, Elaine is here. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Brooke. So if you're from Broken Arrow, you recognize this Brooke, right? Don't tell me you don't. Um, yep, this comes from the Broken Arrow for sure. Let's see, Arkansas, Jamie's here, Iowa, thank you, Morris, for checking in. Nashville, Robin's checking in, Kentucky, Lee is here. Man, all kinds of fun people everywhere. Dan, good to see you again. Been a while. Massachusetts checking in. Um, oh, Carrie, I don't know, someone was, someone over on Facebook was from Puyallup. So, so Facebook and Instagram people here. You guys chat with each other for a second. No. So, yeah. I can't. Let's see. Here we go. Man, I finally got that to boot up. So. Cool. All right. I think we'll be good to go. Um, very, very fun. Uh, you know, I, Kim, I know it's crazy, uh, the reach. is It is growing. And you know why it's growing? It's growing because you guys continue to share because it feel, because it's working for you. And so my only hope, you know, I've said this a little bit lately, my only true hope in this is that uh, that that we just figure this out, that it's just, it's just a journey worth traveling. So it's just so, so much fun. Uh, Cheryl checking in for Virginia, T uh, Traverse City, Michigan, Pam's checking in, good evening to you, very fun over on YouTube, so how fun is this, so, I mean we're live on Instagram, live on Facebook, live on YouTube, it's like three different things, my head's on a swivel, um, well we talked about the Detroit interview on the, last night on the Instagram feed, we talked about the Detroit show, and then I think I talked about it on the previous podcast, so go into, you're already in YouTube, but the previous episode in YouTube talks about the Detroit show. Uh, I'll give you a quick little highlight only because you asked, but uh, the Ask Dr. Nanny show looks like it's going to air on the Discovery Channel and then uh, obviously on uh, Detroit Public Television, Channel 4, I believe. And, of course, I will get a link to share. But it was an amazing time. It was just absolutely fun to sit you know, on a live studio or TV set with a, a, TV set with a live studio audience. Uh, the makeup was the best part. I've said that a couple times now. Uh, it's it's funny to say, but that was I, I. Hey, I I now know why you guys all wear makeup because you put this makeup on and then you get um, you look in the mirror and you're like, I like this. So uh, Kim says, "What is your top tip for telling your story on stage or on cam without getting too nervous?" Kim, um, here's what's funny about that, and I don't really have any tips, but what I can tell you is I don't make any of this stuff up, and so and everything I do is unscripted. So I just I just open this, and whatever comes out is what you get, and um, it doesn't make me nervous because it's my life that I'm living, and so I just kind of just kind of say it. So uh, YouTube. So here's the deal with YouTube comments. YouTube comments pop up. And um, and they pop up and they disappear as quickly as I see them. So it looks like Alabama checked in on YouTube, but I missed it. So apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, you, you've got to speak from the heart, right? 
Ah, so you have a stand-up comedy show tomorrow night, and you're dying of nerves. Uh, you know, comedy's tough. Comedy is, is tough because there's the it's the expectation, right? So when you stand up and do stand-up comedy, your expectation is that you want to make people laugh. And so um, here's here's the advice I would give you. So I have no expectations when I go live here. I don't go live to inspire you. I don't go live to to deliver a specific message. I simply go live because I have things that I've written down and I'm going to, you'll see when I do the show, I read what you write in, but then the rest is me just, just telling you what I know. And so whatever whatever I'm going to deliver, I'm just going to let it out with no expectation. And so I come to the realization that that, that works for me. If you want to watch that, then by all means, you're welcome. If for some reason I'm not hitting the expectations that you set, then by all means, go find some other way to be entertained. So so you absolutely just go up and deliver your spiel the way you know how to deliver it. And if the audience doesn't like it, they're missing out. You know? So pff, pooey on them. All right. Mandy's checking in from Oklahoma. Let's see. Yeah, Susan's going to San Francisco. Chris is here. Chris has got some exciting news. Hopefully you're going to share that in a little bit. If not, then uh, I certainly won't. But you know the deal. Um. Yeah, so Becky, you would drive up to San Francisco. Thank you. Yeah, November 10th. I will publish the official date soon. Um, I'm sharing it with you guys. It's not a big secret. But uh, on March 1st is when I plan on having uh, the program released so that we can, uh, you can join me. And I got a couple cool things in the works. I got, um, well, I'm going to share it with you because it's fun. Uh, so I've, I've announced that I'm going to do an international tour. I'm going to run uh, eight 5Ks this year. I'm going to do one in, uh, in Biloxi. Uh, we're going to go to Tulsa, which is right near Broken Arrow. You guys know that. We're going to go to Biloxi. We're going to go to Tulsa. We're going to go to Denver. We're going to hit Washington, D.C. We're going to hit Philadelphia. We're going to hit Toronto. We're going to hit San Francisco. And we're going to hit Indianapolis, right? So eight 5Ks. Oh, no, two of them aren't 5Ks, actually. Denver is not a 5K, and Indianapolis is not a 5K. So here's the intent. Um I'm going to, you know, I want you to join me on these runs. I don't care if you run. I don't care if you walk. I don't care if you cheer from the sidelines. What I want to do is be at the event together, and then we either hang out before or we hang out after. Uh, we run at our own pace. We walk at our own pace. We find our own tribe. I'm going to have special medals made up that the only way to get them will be to participate in these events. So i got eight events. The dates will be published soon. I did leak t tonight that November 10th will be the final date out in San Francisco. Uh, we're going to do Chrissy Park is actually the location, if you're familiar with San Francisco. Uh, and then there's a chance that on that Sunday we'll run the 10-miler across the, the Bay Bridge. How fun would that be? So anyway, cool. Lots going on there. Becky checking in from Ohio. Uh, let's see. November 10th. Yes. Let's see. Uh, Sheridan, Illinois. Dawn's checking in. Uh, El Paso. Rose is checking in. Good evening to you. Diane says hello. Keith is here. Teresa, gotcha. Thank you for that. I was always. That's the hardest part. Or I mean, not the hardest, but one of the hardest parts for me is, is one. I'm terrible with names. For one, um, two. I'm terrible with pronunciation. And so, and then three. Instagram makes it all even more fun, where you come in with names that that don't even make sense half the time. So trying to have a verbal interaction when I don't know how to pronounce your name is, is not fun. So if I butcher it, know that I butcher it with love. Just know that. Uh, so we'll go from there. And again, YouTube, guys, you have to know this. that I saw, I see them, and I'm, I'm in trying to read. I get three screens going on. So when you, when you reply on YouTube, um, you can keep saying the same thing until I, until I acknowledge it because it, it disappears as quickly as it comes on. Uh, very fun. Cool, cool, cool. I know. Why, why, why oops up, I made up. That's why. And you want to know how I made that up? So I went into, um, why oops up stands for when you're out of points, stop eating points. I took the first letter. I put it in one of those Google text to translate things. And I let Google tell me how to pronounce it. I listened to it five or six times. Google determined that it was why oops up. So we stuck with why oops up. So... Cool, cool, cool. All right, Nashville's checking in. Uh, let's go ahead and skip all the way to the bottom. You know the deal there. I'm going to miss a whole bunch of comments. 
Um, so, yep, look at that. I missed a ton, 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 ton of comments. Uh, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and... Right, that's why Oopsep is the backstory. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Are you ready for episode... What are we at? 173? I think that's where we're at, right? I'm going to have to look at that. I'm pretty sure it's 173. Um, but I need to check because I'll, I'll say it wrong in the show. Um... Maybe 174? Hmm, let's see, where are we at? Yeah, 174, see, I was wrong. 174. Cool. Yep, thank you. You guys are awesome. You guys are so awesome. You guys know it better than I do. Look at it, well, look at all the, everyone on Facebook is 174, 174, 174, 174. How cool is that? So, all right, are you ready for 174? Yep, you guys knew it. You guys knew it. Let's do episode 174. Um, quick little mic check for sure. Let's see. <sighs> Oops. Sorry, Instagram. Mic check testing, testing one, two, three. All right, that sounds good. Uh, let's go. All right, so you know the deal, right? We're going to do episode 174. We're going to do it live. Uh, this is my opportunity to, of course, record the show, so you get to watch the recording live. But if something happens in the technolo technology world, you know, if Facebook decides to act up again or YouTube wants to cut me off or Instagram gives up on me, I'm going to continue with the recording uh, because that's the easiest way for me, and then the show will still make it out. So apologize in advance for any technology glitches, but I've rebooted everything tonight before the show. So it looks like Facebook is cleaner. Last time we did a show, it wasn't super-duper clean. It looks like that is working now, um, and we'll, we'll go. So uh, are you ready? So you guys know if you this is not your first rodeo, Drink up. Cheers. Water. Yum, yum, yum. Um, cool. Suzanne is asking if anyone in Illinois attends a meeting in Wheaton or Naperville, and there are quite a few people that do that. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Very fun. All right, episode 174 coming up. Coke Zero and a bourbon. Uh, you know, you know that. I got rid of soda. Um, I got rid of soda 12, uh, I'm sorry, 12, 12 sodas a day. Two years ago. Chris is asking about the Toronto stop. I'll give you the date. Uh, it's June 23rd. It's the Toronto stop. And I got to tell you, the, it's, um, it ends up being Pride Weekend up there. And so it's actually PrideRun.org will be the run that I run in Toronto. It looks to be a ton of fun. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be a fun trip all around. So certainly June 23rd uh, is the date there. Basically, every one of the dates will be on a Saturday. Uh, Indianapolis will be November, sorry, uh, September 8th. I have that off the top of my head. Uh, Biloxi is April 28th. Um, Broken Arrow will be, or Oklahoma, Tulsa will be uh, June 26th. Sorry, May 26th. So, um, anyway, that's all. I will publish it all March 1st. For those of you who are um, patrons, right, if you go to Patreon, and you uh, you support the show financially. The dates are released inside there. I released them early to those folks who are who are supporting the show, helping that financial support. So I appreciate that. For the rest of you, sorry, you got to wait till March first or continue to watch the live show. Maybe I'll leak them out 
every once in a while. Are you ready? I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points! Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. That's right, I believe in you. Welcome to episode 174 of Wise Advice. And man, it's such an honor to be here again with you. We record the show on a Friday night, and it's awesome to see so many people tuned in on a Friday night just uh, just staying focused, staying dialed in. And, and if you're out there walking, if you're out getting exercise, whatever you're doing right now, if you're listening to the podcast, we, we'd love to have you join us live. We're live on Facebook. We're live on Instagram. We're live on YouTube. Very, very easy to find. If you go to Google and you type in Fat Dag, you'll find too much, too many links to find out where we are. But certainly, we'd love to have you join us in the live show. It's a lot of fun. And so, so we end up opening the show with an email. But I, before we do that, I, I started to announce uh, what we're going to do is the international tour. 2018, I got eight runs coming up. We're going to do eight 5Ks across the nation. We're going to bounce from city to city once a month. And I really want you to join me. And so on March 1st on FatDag.com, I will announce the dates. I'll put them on Instagram. I'll put them on Facebook. But I want you to tune in on March 1st so you know exactly when we we're going to do it. I got a couple of neat little surprises for you as we go through that process. So uh, stay tuned for more information there. The first email comes in from Westchester, Ohio. Ty writes in and says, Hi there. Ever since Freestyle... I've actually not lost weight. I've gained. I have to keep on the program because I do not want to give up. I downloaded a calorie tracker and I saw that I was eating some days 2,300 calories and some days 2,700 calories. I'm five foot five, so this is too much. This was my day-to-day eating more zero meats and eggs and thinking I was being healthy picking zero foods than using my points for my meals. Freestyle has unlocked the overeater in me. I had an eating disorder years ago, and with help, I turned to food instead of against it. I know this is not a Weight Watcher problem, but but having so many zero-point foods is rough. I need advice on how to make freestyle work. I've asked 24-7 chat, and, and I was told this is the new program and to adapt. Eating till you are satisfied and not having to weigh sounds like freedom, but it's so far from that for me. Please help, as I do not want to leave the program. I've lost 50 pounds with Weight Watchers, and and I'm 20 pounds from goal. Thank you, Ty. Well, Ty, let's open up with the obvious here. You've downed 50 pounds. You didn't do that by accident. You did that because because you had a program and you were following the program and that program absolutely worked for you. Think about how awesome and how focused you were to get down 50 pounds. It's an amazing accomplishment. And, and again, I, I've said this more than once. There's very few people who can say they've lost 50 pounds deliberately. You know, so, so you're in an elite category initially because you were able to stay focused and persevere to that. And you're, you're 20 pounds away from goal, which means, which means you've got to be feeling incredible. It means you probably actually look incredible. And so as we adjust to this new program, I don't completely agree with the notion of, well, it's a new program to simply adapt because I don't believe that is true for everybody. And so, obviously, I'm a Weight Watcher leader. Obviously, this podcast is my own. These are my own opinions. So so take what I say here with a grain of salt. But what I want you to know is, is I do firmly believe in the new program. But what I believe is the new program works for some people. 
I don't believe it's a one shoe fits all for every single person. So I believe that you're now going to have to adjust. You're going to have to adapt, as they would say. But adapt doesn't mean adapt blindly. Adapt means is that you need to dig deep into what worked for you to lose those 50 pounds, make the adjustments into this new program, and maybe it's not the new program you stick with. Maybe it's a maybe it's a combination. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it is you determining what is best for you using the education that you got to lose 50 pounds. Now, that education that you got to lose 50 pounds is very, very valuable. So, so what I would encourage you to do at this point is to look back at your journey, compare the journey of, of uh, your first 50-pound loss to the last few months where you feel like you're gaining. And I want you to notice what, or find out what you think is noticeably different. And, and so the zero-point foods, for a lot of people, I, I hear that a lot is that there are so many people that, that when we say you don't have to weigh, uh, weigh and measure your food, it opens up the door for that ability to overeat. I understand that completely. So, so now you have to make the assumption. You have to make some, some changes. And, and so because you don't have to track them, because you don't have to weigh them, doesn't mean that you can't. So start writing things down in your tracker at this point because if you're, if you're now at the point where, where you're having difficulty because of the program shift, Start being a little more accountable to what you put in your app. And as you start looking at that, you will start seeing that maybe, you know, too many bananas in a single day is that's the week that's not working for you. And at that point, you're going to have to set some limits on your zero point foods that are independent to you and to your journey alone. Now, what we know about the zero point foods is that is that by and large, it's a list of foods that people typically are not inclined to overeat. Now, now, obviously, in some cases, you know that that has to suffice for a general population. There will certainly be individual people who who will have to make different adjustments to that. That's where you're at at this point, and and let the scale continue to guide you. If your scale it continues to climb, then you certainly can still weigh food. You certainly can still measure the food. You certainly can still track it. And, and you want to then limit yourself to, you know, if, if, you're, if you're doing five or six servings of zero-point foods a day and the scale's climbing on you, then, then now you need to mentally resort down to four or five servings or three or four servings and start making that adjustment. The absolutely good news here is that, is that you've lost 50 pounds. So, so you know there is a program out there that works for you. You can do this. And so now coming to you with, with the biggest heart that I have, and I, I say this with, with a ton of love, and please don't misinterpret this. And so I want to, to ask you a question because your email doesn't say it, and this isn't a two-way conversation. So, so what I'm about to say, if it hits you the wrong way, certainly let's re it because that's not where it's coming from. But, but so many times I, I do see when the program changes or when people make an adjustment, is that just the fact of a simple change is where people start getting a little bit resentful. It happened to me. I, I was on my path losing weight, and, and I lost 91 pounds using Points Plus. The switch to freestyle threw me for a little bit of a loop. I was able to finally readjust and get back into what I, what I know works for me. And so the questions that I would ask you is, is are you working the program the same way you worked the program when you lost the first 50 pounds? In some ways, I, what I see is now people, because of freestyle is giving them zero-point foods, they're now e able to consume some of the foods that they were able to originally wean themselves off of. So if your freestyle now is giving you more zero-point foods and that's opening up the door for more chips and more snacks and, and more of the things that, that generally you can have, but, but we, we really need to have those in moderation. But if you're getting more of them, then certainly that could be an issue. So I would ask you now to compare, again, how you're working the plan now and see if you can find any notable, noticeable differences in how you worked it to lose 50 pounds. If there are things that you're eating now that you weren't eating back then that may not be a zero-point item, then we just have to understand, you know, maybe, maybe there's something different that I can do here. You certainly can do this. You didn't lose 50 pounds by accident. You, you know 
how to do this. So now take one step, reset, you know, pretend, pretend you're starting over all new. Continue to work the plan. And I'll ask you this. Rather than focusing on the scale number, how do you feel? Do you feel like you're down 50 pounds? Do you feel healthy? Do you feel like a rock star? Because that feeling is really what we're after. And being 20 pounds from goal, I'm quite confident you look good. I'm quite confident you feel good. And that in itself is a celebration. I don't want you to leave the program. I want you to be successful. I want you to do everything that you know works. And cautiously, as you continue to track calories separate and independent of the app, be mindful of the fact that you're working two separate programs trying to get one set of results. And I would I would say pick one that works for you, find that, lock in, and get it done. Thank you so much for your email. I share in your concern. I share in your comments. And, and I'm here to let you know that we can do this together. Next up, Karen writes in, and uh, this is an absolutely cool email. Karen writes in and says, Lifetime, I'm ecstatic that I've achieved lifetime status on my Weight Watcher journey. I seem to reflect on my lifetime, the karma, the destiny that has brought me to this moment. I have tried my entire life to lose weight with so many attempts at Weight Watchers. I did liver once a week, clicking boxes for protein, breads, and fruit, and the sliding chart of fat and protein, never getting to goal, much less to lifetime. This time was different. My why was set in stone the day that I joined online only, December 31st, 2015. As an online only member, I had to have a strong inner core. I had to have discipline and focus. I upgraded to meetings after 18 months of online only. Connect was my virtual meeting. Encountering many people along the way, that's how I met you, Fat Dag. We were both driven, tracking, activity, our tennis goals, with our eye on reaching the goal. Who knew this connection would, connection would incorporate the Wise Wingman Facebook group, the Wise Advice Podcast, much less Operation Fat Dag? It was all meant to be. Not only did I believe I could do it, so did my, you and, and all my friends. I'm proud and honored to join Team Lifetime. The feeling is surreal. Is it true? Is this me? My mindset is to continue my outstanding healthy lifestyle by continuing to prep my food every Sunday, measuring, tracking, hydrating, and my daily activity. The great habits I've been doing for the past 26 months is the only way to continue for my lifetime. Thank you, Mike, my Connect family, the wise wingmen, all for your tremendous support. Thanks for all you do for our country, our tight community, and Operation Fat Dag, which I am proud to be a member. Love, Karen. At age 67, lost 84 pounds off diabetes medication, went from a size 24 and a 3X to a size 10, 12. Karen, congratulations. How cool is that? Lifetime, I told you, there, there is no feeling like it. So, yes, this is true. Yes, this is still you. You've done something absolutely incredible. Be proud of that. And so it may give you a new identity to some extent, but it's still the same you. It was the you all along that has, should have been there. You feel great. I, I can read it in your email. When we chat online, when we chat in our, our tight little community, even though it's not as often as we'd like, but, but we, I can feel the energy of when someone reaches lifetime. There, there's nothing like it. You know, and so, so here you are uh, with an amazing set of discipline and focus as an online-only member. 
if you hear me on this show, obviously I talk about folks who do this online, and I, I tell you that that is very, very difficult. You truly have to be disciplined, dialed in with a strong inner core in order to do this online. And, and I can tell that your why was set in stone. If you focused on your why for those 18 months, that is what got you pushing in the right direction to get down to the point where you went to the meeting, lost the, you know, the last of it to 84 pounds total. This time is different. This time is different because, because now you understand what hitting lifetime means. You now know what you were working for this entire time, that, that feeling of it being surreal. Is this true? Is this me? The pride and the honor of joining Team Lifetime. That's what you were fighting for. That's what you now will fight to preserve. Every day from this point forward, you're going to have to make that decision. Is, is Do I want to stay at goal? Do I want to stay on Team Lifetime? Or do I want to revert back to my old lifestyle? Now, you don't clearly don't want to revert back to your own lifestyle. So, so you have a game plan in, in check. You have a strong community. I welcome you to the Operation Fat Dag team. Thank you so much for stepping up into that realm. We'll certainly talk about that down the road. But, but those are things that certainly will keep you focused. Staying with a group of people who are all successful, who are all working the journey, is what's going to keep you at goal and lifetime for a very long time. You've heard of the adage, right, is, is show me your five closest friends and I'll, and I'll predict your future. If you continue to hang around those who are positive, motivated, energized, moving in the right direction, you will continue to inspire and you will continue to get it done. Way to be the prize. Right now, someone's listening, wondering if they can hit lifetime, wondering if, if it's worth it to put down something that they de ne didn't really ask for but it kind of got their attention. And, and will they put it down because the, the, the effort it takes to put it down is way better and, and you know, it, way more uh, rewarding to actually hit goal and hit lifetime? Karen, you've confirmed that for them. You've confirmed that at 67 years old, you can lose 84 pounds. You can completely change your life. You did most of it online. Cheryl on Facebook reaches out right now, so she's down 100 pounds online. It doesn't matter how you do this. What matters is why are you doing it? Do you know why you're doing it? Do you know why you're going to continue doing it? If you do, then you can reach any goal you set for yourself. Karen, again, truly, congratulations. Welcome to Team Lifetime. Let's work together. Let's show other people that this absolutely is possible, but more importantly, it absolutely is worth it. Next up, out of Toledo, Ohio, Abby writes in, says, Good afternoon, Dag. Uh, I've been wanting to write this email to you since I started listening to your podcast. I am currently somewhere in the 70s in your podcast. I'm going in order, and I binge listen in my car, at work, or while walking at the gym. I catch the beginning of your show sometimes live on Facebook, and I love that you do a before show before you record. I'm often asleep to stay up for the whole thing. I started Weight Watchers September 15th, 2017. In almost five months, I hit a huge milestone for me. I made it through five pounds and 10 pounds in my first week. I lost 11 pounds my first week. I then hit my 5%. And I have patiently, I've been waiting for my next milestone. Well, I hit it this morning. I stood on my scale and I saw that I had lost 35.4 pounds this morning. I lost my 10%. I wanted to cry. I was so excited to put it in my app. I'm online only. And I saw the icon that I said that I had lost 10%. At 5.30 this morning, I posted on Connect that I lost my 10% and how excited that I was. Throughout the day, however, I lost a little bit of wind out of my sail. I see that people post things on Connect and they get a bunch of comments, likes, followers, or encouraging words. I like hearing those sort of things. Sometimes I just, I just need a little push to keep on going and, I, and to know that I have some people in my corner. Don't get me wrong. I love the few people I have as wingmen, but 
I know they all have lives and their own struggles. So I'm asking for a favor. I, I know you will help me celebrate my 10%, but can you give my connect name a quick shout out? Abby Jean 18 and have others celebrate this big milestone with me as well as others that I will have in the future. Abby from Toledo. Abby, uh, congratulations on proving me right. I told you if you hit 5%, you can hit 10%. I'll go one step further. So if you hit 10%, you can hit goal. Congratulations on 5%. Congratulations on 10%. Congratulations on 35 Point four pounds. That's an incredible accomplishment. And you've done it all online only. That, that's another shout out for the online only crowd. Amazing, amazing focus. Now I understand fully your, your, um, your frustration, your angst, your anxiety about the Connect community from a standpoint of, you know, there are, are millions of posts inside there. And so how does a post become popular? How, does, how do people find it? And, and what I can tell you is, is there is no secret sauce. So what I would encourage you to do is, is as you reach out to other folks, as you scroll through, you find people who reach 10%, you continue to reward them, congratulate them, tell them how awesome they are, they will in turn find you and they will start following you. That's the best advice I can give you. As I go through this process with you, I, I, I can honestly tell you from this point forward, it gets harder, but it gets way better. And let me tell you a little bit about that. This is absolutely an individual journey. Now, certainly we need, we need cheering people along the way. We, we need to work together as a group. But the responsibility to push forward is 100% yours. As you reach your goal, when you get there, because you absolutely will, because I told you if you hit 10%, you can reach your goal. When you get to that point where you reach goal, the pride has to come from within. You know, you need to learn to celebrate some of these victories all by yourself. And you need to understand that, that it's why I ask people to write down what, what's your non-scale victory? What, are you, what do you feel like? How, how awesome does it feel? And, and what are you able to do now that you weren't able to do before? And, and if you take a moment to take a self-inventory, find those things that, that only you understand that are personal to you, those celebrations internally are what will keep you at goal. And so I fully understand, you know, it does feel absolutely great when, when you know, the cheering section comes in and tells you how, what a great job you're doing. But, but I can tell you is, is, is those who rely on the strictly the external motivation will not have the strength to carry forward the internal celebration well into the rest of their life. And so I want you to I want you to shift your focus. I want you to say be proud of everything that you did. And I want you to celebrate you. I want you to say I did this. And so you know, you, you can do it again. You can keep going whether whether we cheer with you which we're absolutely thrilled for you. Don't get me wrong. I mean uh, Instagram's lighting up. I I see Facebook is lighting up. We absolutely are here for you. But you are here for you first. So Abby Jean 18, congratulations on your 10%. Let's continue to stay focused. Let's continue to drive forward. Let's continue to set small goals. And at some point, you will hop on the scale in a weight loss mode at the point where you sorry, where you no longer want to lose any more weight. It's at that point we will celebrate together, we will cheer together, and then you will, you will be on a journey of a lifetime where you will have the responsibility to cheer on others and show them that it's possible. Abby, congratulations. Keep up the amazing work. At a Longview, Washington, uh, Jennifer writes in and says, Hi, I just started listening to your podcast last week, and I've been blown away by your leadership skills. I've already printed four or five quotes and I put them on the wall in my office. Yesterday, February 3rd, I got to goal again and back to lifetime for the third time. When my leader asked me how I felt about it, I told her that this time I feel differently. I did not want to go out and eat everything in sight. I want this to be my life. 
I'm 67, and I got to goal the first time when I was 22, and I found that I was pregnant. Yes, the fish and the liver days. I am so thankful for all the technology now that allows us to find support. Finding your podcast and watching your Facebook live show has given me a whole new focus. And now, I know for sure that I'm staying on this Weight Watcher journey. Thank you for what you do, Jennifer, at a Longview, Washington. Jennifer, congratulations on hitting goal. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel differently? You know, I I know it feels differently. This, you know, here I've been now goal lifetime for I don't know a couple of years now, a year and a half. I forget the exact. You know, what was it September twentieth of of sixteen? So uh, yeah, it totally feels differently. And and when I hear people say it feels different, that's kind of when I go, okay, okay, Jennifer's got this. And so if you'll notice, and, and you know, I, I spent some time on Connect, I spent some time on Facebook, and when people hit milestones, you know, very rarely do I say something along the lines of, you look great. I almost always say, how do you feel? And the reason I ask that question deliberately is because I think everyone looks great before. And, and looking great, all, although it means something different to everybody, feeling great is something that you yourself can feel, measure, and, and that's an internal goal that you can recognize. I'm glad to see that you say you feel differently, and that feeling of, of now that I've reached goal, I don't want to go out and eat everything in sight is very, very awesome. Happened to me as well. And so so I passed that fitness test, you know, when I did, and I went and sat in my office and ate a turkey sandwich. It felt absolutely different to finally, completely change my life. I appreciate the comments on the, on the leadership skills. And I, I put a post on Twitter tonight because it was just one of those things that was resonating in my brain is, is I, I had no intention starting this journey as a leader. I started this journey just documenting a direction that I had to go for me. I'm truly honored that, that we all agree that it's the right direction, that we're all headed in the same direction. And, and all I'm doing is pointing the way and saying, come with me. If you want it, it's possible. I'll take on the heat, I'll, I'll bring it in, and I'll, I'll charge forward and say, this is the direction we're going. This is how we change our life. This is how it gets to the point where we can reach goal. We can feel differently. We can completely do anything that we want to, but what it requires, it requires us to stay on this journey, to stay mindful, to stay accountable, to stay plugged in for the rest of our lives. When you do that, you have completely changed your life. You now have a whole new responsibility on this journey. It's very, very important. Your responsibility now is to show other people it's possible. At 67 years old, you absolutely went out, you crushed it, you got it done. There are people listening right now that wonder if they're too old to do it. They're wondering if they can do it online. They're wondering if they can do it for a fifth, second, third, whatever time. They're wondering if they can keep up doing it. You've proven that. You, need the, you have the responsibility now to share your story, be the prize, convince them that the journey is worth it, convince them that you feel great, that it's a feeling that they too can get to. That is what I charge you with. Be a leader. Be, be someone else in this community who is a champion for success and convinces everybody else that it's absolutely worth the effort. Jennifer, congratulations on getting back to goal, continuing in your lifetime journey. I'm incredibly honored to, to speak with you and to, and to hear your story and to share it with the thousands of folks listening. So thank you so much. It's an honor to celebrate with you. Folks, what is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com, click on Wise Advice Podcast, send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll certainly work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. It's that internal pride that starts with you writing it down and recognizing it is what will carry you forward. You don't have to be perfect. You have to understand that what you're doing is absolutely doable. And that maybe you're just doing your best 
knowing that every day your best is all you're responsible for. You wake up the next day, you do it, and that pride of continuing on reinforces the notion that you can do anything that you want to do. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Liz says, it always goes by so fast. Huh. So technology. So episode 173 may or may not make it. So we'll see. Uh Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. There's the sound. Sorry. It was blinking red light. Um, it's back. Sorry. Got it now, right? Everyone's saying lost sound. But I fixed it. I hit the mute button. I don't know when I hit the mute button, but I hit the mute button. The Instagram folks, you can hear me the whole time because you have a different microphone. YouTube, you could hear me the whole time because I have a different microphone. So, cool, cool, cool. Uh, anyway, so welcome back. Uh, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it was me. I hit the mute button on the microphone. Sorry, it was all my fault. I don't know how, I don't know why I did, but I hit this mute button. Um, this little button right here on the microphone. This is the, um, this is the Facebook audio comes here, and if I press the, and that turns it back on. So, sorry about that. But Instagram folks have a whole different microphone, and then YouTube has a whole different microphone, so uh, it's all good. Yeah, episode anyway, 174 is in the books. Um, very, very fun. I don't know what I said, Jackie. You're going to have to go watch it over in um, on YouTube. Because I told you, we, we ta I told Kim at the beginning of the show, is uh, you know this is all unscripted. I read your email after that. I just, bleh. Whatever, whatever in here is what you get. So, um, yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, uh, so anyway, so yeah. Oh, what I was gonna say is, uh, what I think what I t said is, is the computer behind me didn't record the show. So, uh, so I I will now have to figure out how to get the audio out of Facebook again and into into the episode. So. It's it's fun. The technology side of this piece is way more fun. Alicia, no, no flooding where I'm at. At least, you know, at least not locally. So, um, there, I think it's a little bit south of where we're at. So, Robin's saying, "Help me. I need a lot of this." Good. I'm glad that's what we're here. Very fun. Yeah. Um, let's see what else is going on. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, ah, Joanne says the Chick-fil-A in our town opened yesterday. I can't decide whether to wait until the novelty wears off or brave the crowds. Uh, if it's anything like the Chick-fil-A here, the novelty won't wear off. Um, the place is always packed. I, what I've learned to do is I kind of go at odd times. So I don't go between 11 and 12. I go to lunch. If I go there for lunch, I go at like 1230 to one. Uh, and I don't go there. I try not to go there during the dinner time because it's the same thing. So, I kind of go off hours because it's crazy during lunchtime. Um, Marcel, yeah, what, so that's the benefit of watching it live is that, well, I guess as long as the technology cooperates, you get to watch it live. But um, I think I'm hoping I'm hoping that it, it recorded well. I'll know I'll know in about an hour. Um, let's see. 
Heather says, Abby's email really made me think about what motivates me. I can't rely on others to keep going. I appreciate what you told her. And so, you know, I'll be, I'll be brutally candid with you. As much as I really enjoy being able to share this story with you, there are times when I wonder um, if, if I was, if I could just kind of fade away, right? In a, in a sense where, um, I now know what it takes to be internally driven and internally motivated. And so I've re- had to rely on that because I tell you now, you know, some of the, some of the followers that, that are cheering me on aren't exactly cheering me on for lack of a better term. And so, so now that's a whole different struggle to go with. And some days I'm wondering, you know, would it be better if I just didn't have anyone cheer me on because I can rely on me. And so, so I always, I wouldn't say it bothers me because it's not the right term, but, but it bothers me when, when, when someone says, you know, I, I want to have my post trend or, or I want to be, you know, I want everyone to celebrate with me. As much as I truly understand that, I, I also know what that comes with. And, and that comes with, you know, a little bit of, ugh. um, and so, so the truth is, is, and it happens as you lose weight, right? So, it's the same same story as, as 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 you're losing weight on this journey. You know that scale reward is very motivating, and so you hop on the scale and you lose a pound and you celebrate. You hop on the scale next week, you lose a little bit, you celebrate. When you get to goal, the scale no longer rewards you. In fact, it does just the opposite because because at some point when you get to your goal weight. You know, you can't even even on your way down. You know, we all know that you're going to have gains along the way, right? But but when you get to your goal weight, a gain is a significantly more common occurrence. So so now, if you're using that scale to motivate you, or you're using the influence of others to motivate you, which are both very motivational, but if you're relying on those two things, those two things go away quickly. So so you reach goal. And and all, all of a sudden, you know, your cheering section disappears. You reach goal, and your scale no longer is a downward slope. Your scale kind of does one of these. So those two things disappear, and now you have to rely on your internal motivation. So what you need to do during this part of your journey is you really need to to dig deep into your non-scale victories, deep into that emotional connection to you, and celebrate that internally. And so it's it's how I deal with with some of the fun emails I get and some of the fun text messages I get, because you know I, I was actually having a great conversation uh, be, just before the show, and and you know someone asked me something and, and I said you know I'm not apologizing for that because because I'm doing absolutely the best that I can do and so so when you get into that mindset of, of I know that I've done my absolute best. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks at that point because I know that I've done my absolute best. And so that's where you are in your journey. If you're tracking everything and you're following the planet and you've hit your 10% by, by, you know, by killing it, that's a huge accomplishment and an amazing celebration. So that's the after show soapbox. We need to do uh, a hashtag for that called hashtag after show soapbox. And that was it. Um, yeah, Pam, you know, so here's, uh, you know, okay, we're going to get back on the soapbox because Pam's comment is about uh, addressing the freestyle subject. I don't have a good solution for freestyle. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan and a big proponent of every program in the world works for somebody. Freestyle may not be it for you at this, go, this juncture. And so I, as much as I hate to say that because I, I believe it can be, but I also know there are some challenges with it for some people. And so you have to find a way to, to make it work for you or find something that does work for you. If you're focused on your why, then, then almost everything at that point works. So it's very, very important to stay focused on the why. Um, so Instagram folks, we're going to lose you in a minute 32. So, um, and we're probably, and we're about going to wrap up. So, uh, in a minute 30, we're going to lose you for good, and I'm not going to reset Instagram. If you want to join the last five or so minutes, we'll be on Facebook and or YouTube. Uh, otherwise, we'll sign off Instagram and let that one time out in a minute and 18. So thank you, certainly, uh, for being here as well. Uh, Morris, uh, knee replacement surgery, your wife lost five pounds. It can be done. Yep, very fun. Donna, thank you for that. 
Um, Becky, thank you. Uh, yeah, the Chick Fil A app is good. Uh, it very. It, it, I don't use it. I just. I, I'm random enough where by the time I know I'm going there, I'm already in the parking lot. So. Um, let's see. Ah, Cheryl does not like Chick Fil A. That's okay. You don't have to. Uh, that's fun. Um. Joanne says Saturday morning meetings in Naperville with Patty are awesome at eight or nine thirty. Very fun. Um, Alicia, yeah, people need to learn self validation. It's not easy, right? So, I mean, think about uh, think about why that's not easy. It is for many of us being so overweight for so long, we have no self validation. So it does take a lot to learn it. It's not easy, and so so we do rely on the, the support from others, but but you have to rely on it quickly, and then and then rely on it from yourself. And then Instagram, Instagram folks are gone. So we'll see how many of them join over here. Um, if Becky says if it's got to be, it's up to me. So very fun. Um, Diane says, learning to love oneself is the hardest thing possible to do. You tell yourself daily you're a very positive person, but not with me. A lifetime for life, 50 pounds down after many tries. So very cool, Diane. Well, congrats on your 50-pound loss. That's awesome. Uh, Heather, you're very welcome. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, the after show soapbox sometimes, because you know what? It's it's a little less... Um, What's the word I'm looking for on the after show soapboxes? It gives me a, a little more time to read. Because, again, it just comes from the heart. It doesn't come from a script. So uh, the after show, sometimes when you guys ask it again, it gives me a chance to reframe it. And um, and it's a little less stressful in the after show because I'm not, not looking at the clock or anything like that. So... Um, Becky says, totally off subject, but really enjoy reading the posts on the blog on fatdag.com. They are really a boost. Isn't that team amazing? So, um, I don't even know. I think it's like eight people or so. All awesome Weight Watcher people who are doing fantastic. And what I've asked them to do is I said, you know, I'll give you the space. Here's the website. We've already got a little bit of an audience there. You own the blog. It's your content. You put out whatever you want to say. You find your own community inside the blog because we all have so many different things going on that it helps to to kind of just be able to hear it from different places times and places so yeah thanks for the shout out though the team is incredibly awesome yep very very fun for those of you who aren't familiar with fatdag.com click on um the blog post in there and about every two to three days somebody a get one of our bloggers goes out and types a blog uh, strictly for you guys. And at the end of the, if you sign up for the newsletter on fatdag.com, at the end of the month, we push out an email showing you all the blog posts for that month. So, um, well, you sure, Maria says sometimes when you have a strong why, you can still lose your weight. Absolutely, you can, right? And so, and that's the focus piece. So you, you can absolutely, you can know why, but if you don't wake up every single morning looking at your why and saying, do I want today be to be the day that I, that I make this come true or not? And so it's, it's focus and it's discipline and it's focusing on your why. So knowing your why is important. Focusing on your why is kind of the uh, one step further beyond that. And so... I mean, I knew why I needed to lose weight for years, but but it was it wasn't until I woke up every single day and had my wingman reach out to me every single morning and say, "Good morning, Mike. You got it." And reshape reshape my day, focused me on that why, and then and then the decisions to stick with it and stay and not get lost in my way became easier because I only had to worry about today. And so, and every morning I woke up, I had a reminder of what the why was and the refocusing. And then move forward in that direction. So that you absolutely can lose your way. Uh, and so you need to find something. And that's it's kind of why we do the blog, right? It's kind of why we check in on Connect. It's why, um, what else do we do? It's why I have the, an email newsletter as well. All, and I do all kinds of things strictly. You know this, right? The only reason I do all this stuff, the email, the blog, and, and the posting, is I just want to remind you that what you're trying to do is possible. That's it. 
And so follow on Twitter, follow on, you know, I would encourage you, and it's not about me, but I would encourage you to follow me every place that you can because because there's going to come a time in the middle of your day where you've lost your focus and you're not going to check in on Connect, and it's at that point Twitter's going to remind you. You're going to get you're going to get distracted from being on Twitter, and you're not going to be on Connect, you're not going to be on Twitter, and all of a sudden an email is going to come in from me, and that's going to remind you to get back on focus. So the more places you are that remind you that you can do this, the easier it is to stay focused. And that's the only reason we do all that stuff, is to kind of keep you focused. Um, Lisa is about 20 from your goal, having fun in the meantime with the roller coaster ride. Uh, you figure out the next chapter when you get there. You can do it. You absolutely can do it. Um, Pam says, love the meeting after the meeting. Yep, I agree. Um, James asking, how is the family handling your new work with Fat Dag? So uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but um, I mean, I guess the the assumption I'm going to make is that yeah, this is time consuming. It, it's, uh, but it, but what's what's interesting about it is you know forming the nonprofit that we just did, Operation Fat Dag. That's uh, incredibly rewarding for all of us because we're changing lives, and, and when you change someone's life for real, um, there's there's nothing like that. So my family is incredibly supportive of of the fact that that we're doing that for one. They understand the bigger picture, and they also understand that that part of what I do here keeps me accountable to my own self and keeps me healthy, fit, and actively engaged. So, so it's a balance on all three. Um, you know, certainly I always appreciate when you guys you know remind me to thank them for what we're doing because it is very, very important, and and they are a very instrumental piece of this, and and they've made a sacrifice in time as well. You know, I mean, there's. I tell you, one of the one of the biggest changes we've made. This is going to sound weird, but one of the biggest changes that's happened to our household since um, since Fat Dag was born, for lack of a better better scenario, right? Is is I don't drive anywhere anymore, and so now um, I used to. You know, we anytime we'd go anywhere, I'm the one driving, and now if we go anywhere, I'm the one in the passenger seat doing this. And so that's the biggest change, or I don't say the biggest, but that's one of the bigger, bigger changes we've made in that um, because there's just not enough time in the day. And so, again, so any time that you guys reach out and say thanks to the family, I, I share that because um, I thank them as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, Donna says, a friend of mine keeps asking me what I will do if I hit a plateau, thinking she's encouraged me, encouraging you not. Uh, Donna, you, you simply answer that by saying, uh, I'm going to track, I'm going to get some exercise, I'm going to eat healthy. That's an easy one, right? Fun, fun, fun. Uh, Jamie says, on Saturday morning meeting in Little Rock, hit 495 pounds since January 1st. Man, that's incredible. Very, very fun. Ah, Liz, you're in the 10 a.m. meeting in Noonan, Georgia that Lyndon wrote in on episode 133. It's a great meeting. It sounds like it. Very, very fun. Alicia reads a lot of tons of self-help books for mental health. Yeah, I, I, I have a book list as well that I need to need to kind of get into a little more. Um, Maria, you're very welcome. Yep. Linda, you know, man, I keep knocking this over. i got to move this thing. Every time I move, there's a clock. Every time it sits there, it falls over. It, so anyway. Um... Yeah, Linda. Anyway, Linda says Facebook Live is still your favorite. It's my favorite as well for a couple reasons. One, I can see real names, and two, I can um, I can your comments stay until I get to them. Uh, whereas you know, again, YouTube, I I, I don't I, the comments disappear, and Instagram, your names are you know TK four nine six five two nine six eight, and I don't know who that is. So, uh, and 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 Instagram cuts me out in an hour. Facebook lets me talk all night. And I'll do that all night. So very fun. Lisa says Weight Watchers should pay you for this. I agree, uh, but they don't, so it's okay. And that's ne- that was never the plan. That was never the goal. Uh, that was never the vision. So if they call, I'll certainly answer the phone. But uh, I've moved on from even entertaining that as a conversation. It's not something I'm pushing for. Uh, what I push for is to continue to get the message out, doing things that I know that I can sustain and work through. So 
Uh, I do appreciate those of you if you you know if, if you're if you're really so inclined. Uh, many of you have gone into uh, go to fatdag.com and you clicked on the become a patron button and uh, for as little as a buck a month you can you can make an automatic donation. Uh, the, the website will charge you every month if you want. Uh, well, it'll do it anyways, I guess. But you can do it for a buck a month or whatever you want to do. Uh, that money gets reinvested back into all this technology here. So certainly don't have to. Uh, you know, I'm going to do this regardless. But I appreciate those of you who stepped up uh, to help cover that as well. Uh, Suzanne, thank you for for saying. Suzanne says, Mike, you're changing so many people's lives for the better, and so that's the whole goal. Very, very fun. Jennifer, yes, so uh, the Facebook Live is recorded. You can go back to my Facebook page. You'll be able to rewatch this episode at any time. It's also recorded live on um, YouTube as well, so you can watch it on YouTube as well. So Facebook Live, Facebook and or YouTube will both have this entire video. So, um, Let's see. Jamie, yeah. Yeah, my views are my own, right? Uh, Jane, has Oprah ever reached out to me? Nope. So, it, and it's fine. You know, again, that's not why I started this. Oprah has not reached out. Um, the only time Weight Watchers has reached out, it was through their legal team. We'll leave it at that. Uh, that was not a fun week. Month. Um, cool. Robin, you're very welcome. Very, very, very fun. So, uh, and Jennifer, you are in the Patreon, Patreon, so thank you very, very, very much for that. Uh, Jane just recently found you, found me. Thank you. Podcasts have been helpful. That's why they're there. And uh, you recently made your 5%. You're a lifetime member getting back to your goal weight. Very nice. So if you just recently started listening, hopefully you've heard the episodes where I talk about if you've reached 5%, that, that's, you've proven that you can follow a plan. You've proven that you can reach a goal. So now it's just a matter of keep doing what you're doing. You go from 5% to 10%, 10% to goal. You can do it. You've proven you can do it by hitting your 5%. So congratulations on that. So very, very fun. All right, well, let's wrap this up because, again, the audio didn't record behind me. So now i got to figure out how to get the audio off Facebook. That's going to add an hour to my editing process tonight. So it is what it is, but that's the process we're going to go through. So let's go ahead and wrap this up so I can start that and then still get to bed uh, today. So very, very fun. So let's we'll sign off uh, YouTube first. Again, YouTube guys and gals, thank you so much for being here. Truly an honor to walk this journey with you. Uh, I, I truly am um, appreciative of you being here because that, that tells me that what we're doing is working and you're able to get it done. So YouTube, thank you. Have a great night, and we'll see you uh, the next time. And let's close YouTube. And... And let's see, get that done. All right, that's done. Um, cool. Facebook, same thing. Thank you again, truly, for being here. It, you know, same thing I said to the, the other folks. It's truly an honor to be here with you. Uh, but I'm more excited about the fact that you're here because if you know, right now you're here listening, which means you're dialed in, you're focused, and that means you can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't take luck. It doesn't take hope. It takes you being focused, knowing what your why is, waking up every single day, wanting to get it done. So I wish you, from the bottom of my heart, absolutely good focus. Have a great night. We'll see you soon.